Hi, Vieira Falcons. I'm Ms. O'Connor. I'm going to be your STEM teacher this year, and I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you back to school at the brand new Vieira Elementary. Um, I'm right here right now in the Northrop Grumman Vieira Elementary STEM Lab, and I've made a quick presentation just to sort of tell you a little bit about me and a little bit about STEM and some of the things that we're going to be doing this year. So first of all, a few of my favorite things, my family. Um, I have two boys. Their names are Cameron and Aaron. Um, Cameron is the oldest. He's the guy up there with the fish. Um, he is um, working with um, in a STEM career with HVAC, which is heat and air conditioning. He does all kinds of wiring with circuitry and soldering. So he is in a STEM field. And then my youngest, um, Aaron, um, he is at the University of South Florida right now studying engineering as well. Um, you can see some pictures of us on vacation. Um, that's my son Aaron and I on the bottom with our lobster. Um, some friends and I went down to the Key West and we um, caught about 30 lobster recently. And um, you can see both my boys up at the top right. Um, they both graduated from Cocoa Beach High School. And the most favorite family member, of course, is Moose, my miniature Dodson, and he just gets spoiled rotten. We just love him so much. Now, some of my other favorite things are um, the Saints football team. That's why you see the little Florida Lee um, up there in the corner. Um, I was actually born in Mississippi, in Biloxi, and um, so I have a magnolia, plus I love flowers. Um, turtles, I love turtles, sea turtles, um, especially, they're so cute. Um, tacos, like who doesn't love tacos, right? Um, I love traveling. I actually, as um, a kid, my, um, my dad was in the military, and so I traveled a lot, and I moved to a lot of different places. I've lived in Europe, which is why I have the I Love Germany. I was there for seven years as a kid, and then as an adult, I went to college there. And so um, I've had an opportunity to see a lot of the world, which has sort of shaped who I am. Um, I have a picture of a light bulb up there in the top. Um, I'm all for new ideas. I love new technology and it just excites me. That's my passion. Um, I love chocolate. Who doesn't love chocolate? And um, I love to garden. Uh, right now I'm growing zucchini and some peppers and some lemons. I have a lemon tree in my backyard and avocados. And I just get so excited when I have something that I planted um, grow and I can actually harvest and eat something that I, you know, grew. It's pretty exciting to me. So that's just a little bit about me. So when you're in the STEM lab, um, I have some guidelines, and if you just remember STEM, then you'll remember all the guidelines that you're going to need to know. So the first one is um, S, stay positive. And basically what that means is that sometimes when we try to do something, especially in STEM, it, it doesn't work out the way we wanted it to. I, I have that happen to me all the time, and it's pretty frustrating, but it doesn't really solve the problem to get frustrated or to, to not do it or to get sad. So staying positive, know that we haven't been able to do something yet. Maybe you try to do something. Um, it takes a few times, but you're going to get it and just stay positive. And we're going to work together to make sure that you have the best year ever. T is teamwork. Now STEM has a lot to do with working together. But unfortunately, since we do have some social distancing restrictions, um, we're not going to be able to use the T and teamwork as much as at the beginning of the year. Hopefully by middle of the year, maybe some of these restrictions will, will you know, lessen and we'll be able to, to work together. But um, just know that teamwork is a big part of STEM. Um, e is everything has a place. So basically, if you get scissors, you know that scissors have a place. If you get, um, if you cut paper and you have scraps, the scraps go in the garbage can. So keeping a, a neat STEM lab is really important. So not only, you know, can we find things, but everything is, it has a neat workplace area that we can do a lot of fun things with. And then M is making good choices. And that's, that's good at, all the time. Um, and now in addition to STEM and the STEM guidelines, we also have CHAMPS, and CHAMPS is a school-wide thing.
So basically, any time that we have an activity in STEM, if a challenge, so to speak, I'm going to let you know what your conversation level should be, um, how to get help, what should your activity um, be, is it group work, is it independent work, is it centers, how should you be moving, should you be getting up a lot, or should you stay seated, um, what is the participation, and then how am I going to signal you um, to get your attention, and also safety. And so all of this together spells champs, and we will be successful. So it's just clear expectations for, for what um, each activity is expected, you know, for you to complete, so you'll know. Um, another school-wide initiative that we have here, you'll see this a lot, is give me five. So it's basically number one is eyes on the speaker. So if I say give me five, you're going to put your eyes on the speaker. You're going to show me active listening. You're not going to be talking, so your mouth will be closed. You're going to be keeping your feet still. And you're going to show me one hand up. So anytime I or another teacher says, give me five, you'll know that that's what we're expecting. And we just want your attention so that we can give directions. And so we can sort of share with you what we need you to do. So that is something that you'll see um, in every classroom. Now, in the STEM lab, of course, safety is first. Um, we do have safety goggles that um, we will be wearing from time to time that, that will be sanitized. Um, because of the room being a little bit smaller than your classroom or, or the classrooms at Vera Elementary, if you've seen them, um, we will be needing to wear masks at all times. So you will need to have your mask on whenever you come to the STEM lab. And I will also have a mask on. I have a face shield also. So I'll, depending on um, how close I am, I'll, I'll either have a mask or a face shield. Um, we do have some hand sanitizer and some tissues over there at the sanitizer station. And I showed a little picture of that. Um, and we need to try to social distance as much as we can in this room. Now, it is a little bit difficult to do the six feet of social distancing. So we're going to aim for about three feet. And as you can see, those chairs are spaced out about three feet apart. And that's how we're going to need to sit in the chairs is spaced out as much as possible. Um, I will be giving you a specific assigned seat if you are here at school. If not, then you will be getting um, a seat whenever you come to school. Um, if, if you come to school this year or whenever you come to school, know that you'll be sitting in your number seat. Like if you're number one in the class, you'll be sitting in the number one chair. And movement. We really shouldn't be moving around too much in the STEM lab. Um, I'm going to try to have most of the supplies already on the table so that we can pretty much stay in our designated area um, when you are here visiting with me. And um, the materials that I have, like I said, they will not be shared. Normally, we will be doing engineering design challenges and coding robots and doing all these great, wonderful things that's going to require teams. But for now, for at least for the first nine weeks, I've been asked to just keep the materials to where you have your own special materials. Now, there may be some things that I may ask you to bring later on, but right now I will provide everything for you. And then we will be working on computers because technology is part of STEM. And just like the chairs, I have numbered the computers as well. So if you're number one in the class, then you'll always use the number one computer. And so it's just make sure that um, I know that who's on that specific device in case there's ever a question. And then water. Um, I'm going to ask that you not bring water bottles in the STEM lab. We do a lot of things with computers, robotics, um, things like circuits that really are not friends with water. Um, so water unless there is a medical need. Um, I don't have a water fountain in this room, so I'm going to ask that you not bring water bottles to the STEM lab um, at this time. And then the restroom, we do have a restroom, and um, I do encourage you to show me that you need to use the restroom by crossing your fingers. So it's just a quick cross of the fingers, and that will tell me, oh, I need to use the restroom, and I'll say, okay, go ahead, and um, 
please make sure that when you do visit that restroom to wash your hands. And um, I always flush with the foot. That might be something that you haven't ever done, but um, that's one way of not touching the handle as much. So we want to try to sanitize after we finish with the restroom as well. So that's just a little bit of things with safety. Now, what is STEM? STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and math, but it's really about solving problems. So anything that you um, can think of in the world has been engineered. For instance, the iPhone, you know, has been engineered and re-engineered. Um, you know, the iPhone was created and then it's been made better and better and we get updates and different models of it. Um, bridges, things like that. Everything that you see in the world um, to some degree has been engineered if it's been man-made. So it's all about ideas and it's all about working out problems. So we're going to be talking a lot about what is STEM, but I thought I would show you this quick video about STEM in the classroom and uh, just a few of the projects that this teacher has done and some of the projects are some of the um, the same that we're going to be doing as well. So let me go ahead and play this for you. So as you can see they're using connects to design, they're testing, Maybe to see who could go further or faster. Now these are Sphero balls. They're actually robots that you can code with like iPads and such and all kinds of coding challenges. With This is with a ramp, maybe just following a straight line through a course. And STEM is all about innovation. They look like they're having so much fun, don't they? This is a chariot Sphero. It looks like they made a built-in iPhone holder. I love what I do. It's so much fun. We have Sphero balls that we've ordered as well. This is some green screen technology. We'll be doing stop go animation and some green screen at Vera Elementary. And this is Osmo. I don't know if you've ever used Osmo, but there's a lot of really engaging things. Um, I know that they have Osmo in the Media Center. And it looks like they're just doing some science um, investigations there. This is a challenge with flight. Looks like a little copter that they've created. And I've actually done this before. It's seeing um, which structure can hold the most books. And what you're seeing right now is Mickey Makey. And we do have Mickey Makey as well. You can make a Play-Doh piano, all kinds of fun things. So that is just a little bit of um, a little fun project from STEM, some of the, which we're going to be doing as well. Um, I do want to let you know that the STEM lab at Vera Elementary has been sponsored by Northrop Grumman, and they have given us money to help to um, fund all the amazing technology that we're going to have in our STEM lab, but they are also our business partner. And so they want to be a part of STEM. They want to come in and help, and they are engineers. Northrop Grumman is an engineering company. Um, I'm going to show a video um, in the next session of what Northrop Grumman is and basically um, some information about them, but they will be participating with us, not in person initially, but um, through um, Zoom and whatnot. They're going to be joining us. Um, they might be reading books about STEM. Um, they might so we are going to have some future clubs and activities. Now, unfortunately, some of these clubs that I'm about to talk to you about will not begin until the first nine weeks due to the COVID restrictions. But um, they are exciting opportunities that we are going to have here at Vieira Elementary School. Um, the first one is robotics. Um, every year there is a first robotics competition in which we are going to be programming a robot to 
um, maneuver through certain challenges. Um, the Vieira High School uh, robotics students are actually going to be coming over and assisting us with that. Um, but I will be a part of that club and um, I have actually served as a robotics coach before and it is, it's so much fun. Um, another club is Sea Perch. So Sea Perch is an underwater submersible that it's a, comes in a kit and uh, you actually have to use tools and create the submersible, sort of like a little submarine. Um, there's a lot of circuitry involved, there's soldering, and basically the goal is to navigate the Sea Perch through an underwater obstacle course. And um, and that is at a competition called the Innovation Games. And so there are people at Northrop Grumman that are wanting to work with us on Sea Perch. And again, I will also be the coach for Sea Perch this year as well. Um, coding. We will actually be doing coding in class, but there are coding competitions specifically with the Innovation Games using the platform Scratch. So. If you want to get a jump start on your coding, you may want to go ahead and check out Scratch and start learning that platform. And we'll be learning that together as well. Um, drones. So last year was the first year that I actually worked with flying drones. And I have some um, friends from NASA that are going to be helping us with our drones as well. Um, and uh, it's such an incredible experience to fly a drone. Um, I can't wait to share that with you. Um, Legos, I would love to do like a Lego club for our younger students and which we just design and build and share and it's just an engaging and fun time. Um, innovation games. So there are several competitions that I've already mentioned that are part of the innovation games. And these are usually, um, at the end of the year, the, or April, um, we have um, several several events that we can participate in, and we participate against schools, different schools, and so we'll be doing some drone flying, some sea perch, some coding. I think there's a Shark Tank um, competition as well with um, coming up with new inventions. So the Innovation Games is an annual event sponsored by Northrop Grumman that our school district participates in. And there's also a solar energy competition called Energy Wiz. It's at the Florida Solar Energy Center um, over there in Cocoa. And they also have um, competitions like Rube Goldberg um, machines, transfer, transfer of energy. Um, they have solar oven competitions. There's just, there's so much that we can get involved in the community. And um, there's so many clubs that we can have here at the New Vera Elementary School. Now, these are just a few of the resources that I have ordered for us this year. So um, a lot of robots. So in the corner of the top, you see Sphero balls, and it's basically a ball that you can navigate around. Um, it teaches a lot of, of, of great skills um, through coding, and it's a lot of fun for kids. Um, Ozobots, which can be used for all age groups. Um, they can be used with markers and following different color lines and doing different color, um, doing different um, like maneuvers, like going around and around in a circle based on the color codes. Um, they can be used with tablets and they can be used with coding with computers. And those are Ozobots. Um, and then the little thing that looks like a bee is called a bee bot. And that's what I use with our younger students for just directions and navigation and commands with, um, with coding and robots. Um, we've got Legos, of course, lots and lots of Legos. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of things with circuits. So you see like the squishy circuits, which we can actually make a circuit using Play-Doh because Play-Doh is conductive. That means that um, energy can be um, transferred through Play-Doh. Uh, we're going to be making things with um, copper tape, which is um, basically paper circuits. Um, we're going to be doing snap circuits, uh, of course, drones, and those are just a few of the things. Um, we have 3D printers. We're going to be doing some soldering with the older students. Um, I would love to do some rocketry, of course, marble mazes, um, cubelets, um, bloxels, which is a video game. Um, 
it's a creator. Um, we've got connects, we've got Kiva planks. Um, we're going to be doing some stop go animation. I'd love to do some things with virtual reality and augmented reality. So it's just finding the time to do all these wonderful, wonderful things. Um, so this right here is my virtual uh, Bitmoji STEM lab. And as you can see, there are a lot of things in here. So I just wanted to let you know that um, if you click on any of the little icons in here, um, pretty much everything but the chairs and the table, um, it will take you to a link. For instance, if you want to hear a story regarding engineering that has to do with engineering, Rosie Revere Engineer, you click on that link and it will take you to um, someone reading that story to you. So so I challenge you to sort of investigate the virtual STEM lab and I'll be changing it up here um, throughout the year and but feel free to just get click you know click on it and get started and there's just a whole lot of activities here that um, I'll let you look through that are, are pretty fun and exciting it's really hours and hours of learning and um, education and entertainment. And then um, I did want to say that if you want to contact me, um, I am going to be sending home um, a, a welcome home letter next week. Um, but you can contact me on my website that is linked directly to the Vera Elementary. Um, if you want to get in touch with me directly, I'm at O'Connor.Stacy at BrevardSchools.org. And I am looking for donations of Legos. So if you happen to have any Legos, there are some specific colors, like of course the pinks and the purples and the orange that I don't really have a whole lot of, but I'll take any Legos that you have because um, no one can have, ever can have too many Legos, that's for sure. Um, in my welcome letter that I'll be sending home next week, I'm going to also um, include a link to an Amazon wish list just for some extra STEM supplies. Um, I, I, it, it, they range at all different prices, so um, if you can contribute, I really appreciate it. And then finally, volunteers. I would love, love, love for you to be a volunteer in the STEM lab when this whole COVID um, is. Um, sort of ceases. Uh, right now we can't really have any volunteers in the school as you as you well know, but as soon as we get the green light for that, I would love for you to come be a part of our amazing STEM lab and to actually come in and create with us and to solve problems and to participate in some of our engineering design challenges. So I want to have a stemtastic year with you. I cannot wait, wait, wait to to meet all of you in person. And I hope that you've enjoyed this um, little quick overview. And if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me um, at all. I'm in room 403. Um, and as you could, as I said before, my contact information is linked to the Vera Elementary website. Have a great day, everyone.